now return to Cheekies and Pete's in South Philadelphia for the Independence Blue Cross Pool Session presented by Gage Fiore, attorneys that fight for you.com on 1490 WBCB and 610 Sports. Now, once again, here are your hosts, Greg the Bull Luzinski and Dan Baker. Welcome back to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. And uh, we have a chance to talk about one of my favorite players, Dick Allen. Boy, I'll never forget when he came up with the Phillies at the tail end of 63. And, of course, uh, we have Gary Matthews, National League Rookie of the Year in 1973. Dick Allen was the uh, National League Rookie of the Year in 1964. What a year he had. What a year the Phillies almost had. The, there have been a number of books written about Dick, the latest of which, and maybe the best of which, has been written by our next guest, Bill Cachetis. Uh Bill is from uh, Northeast Philadelphia. Bill is here today with uh, a group uh, from the uh, Dick Allen for Hall of Fame Committee, headed up by Mark Carfagno. Where's Mark over there? Thank you all for coming today. Uh, so, Bill, uh, tell Greg Luzinski, Gary Matthews, myself, and all of our listeners about your new book and the man who's featured, Dick Allen. Well, first of all, Dan, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I wrote a book about uh, Dick Allen back in 2004, titled September Swoon, Richie Allen, the 64 Phillies, and Racial Integration. And I wrote that book because the baseball writers had cast Dick's candidacy for the Hall of Fame aside, and I really wanted to reopen that case, uh, which the book did. And it addressed the, uh, the racial issues in Philadelphia at that period of time and how I felt Dick Allen was a victim of that racism. Uh, I did enough tape, audio tape, with Dick that I knew if I wanted to do a full-length biography, I could do it. And when, in 2014, uh, the Veterans Committee considered his candidacy again, and he lost by one vote, I said, it's time to write another book. And that bore fruition in this particular case. Now, one of the things that I do in this book is I go beyond the traditional statistics. Uh, Dick's career statistics warrant an induction, clearly 351 home runs, lifetime average 292, career RBIs of 1,119. Those traditional statistics should be good enough to get him into the Hall of Fame. Now, with Sabre metrics, when we find out that his numbers are even better than that, with an OPS plus of 156 and an offensive war of uh, 68.3, these numbers put him in the same category as Hank Aaron, uh, uh, Rob Frank Robinson, uh, the power hitters of the time period. Uh, so there's no question in my mind that he belongs in the Hall of Fame. And myself, Mark Carfagno, and uh, that whole campaign is trying to bring that to closure. Now, well, where can you get this uh, terrific book? Uh, Barnes & Noble stores are finally carrying it. The publisher, uh, Schiffer of uh, At Glen, Pennsylvania, they put the book out so you could go to Schiffer Books, S-C-H-I-F-F-E-R.com, and get it uh, there. You go to my website, which is historylive.net, and all my books uh, are there. There's a hot link to Schiffer on there as well, and Barnes and & Noble's. Now, do you have a few of these books on sale here today? We have a number of uh, Bull Session fans. I'm sure uh, a few of them might be interested in, in picking up this book today. Can they get it right here at we Chickies do. and Peaches yes. this afternoon? Yes, they can, they can purchase a copy here. And where are you set up? But We're set up uh, just oh, okay. on the other side. Great. Okay, so if anybody wants to pick up this great book by Bill Cachetis, uh Greg Luzinski and Gary Matthews, uh, you... Bull, you played with I Dick. Played, yeah, I was a teammate of Dick, uh, obviously. Uh, I, I remember uh, when he first came over to the Phillies, uh, back to the Phillies, I should say. I was, uh, we were playing San Diego, and uh, Bill Greif was pitching, and there was an incident on the field. And he was in it, I think it was one of his first times up, and uh, he was in the hot deck circle. And I said to him, Dick, do me a favor. He says, what's that? I said, I'm going to the mound. He says, what do you mean you're going to the mound? I said, he's throwing at me. I'm going to the mound. I said, just do me one favor, get the catcher. 
you know, Kindle was catching and I looked at, you know, how you look, go back and you look at films. I got set up on the pitch. First pitch was a curveball. Next pitch was behind my head. So I took off to the mound. So after the game, obviously, you go back and watch the, the film, of, fil, film of the game. And there's, there's Kindle and Dick's got him in a bear hug. I don't think he ever made it past the plate. And uh, Dick always says, man, this is my kind of team. He says, the pine tire wasn't even dry and we're out there just scraping oh, and boy. scrapping. So he said, uh, he, he always, he, in fact, he tells a story. He tells that story quite often. But uh, he was a great teammate, great player, and uh, I agree. Uh, there's no question that uh, he should be considered for the Hall of Fame. Well, you know, uh, another thing that Greg and Dick have in common is having authored some of the longest home runs in Phillies history. Dick was famous for uh, launching those mammoth shots over the roof at Connie Mack Stadium, 21st Street and Lehigh Avenue, uh, up onto the Coca-Cola sign, over the Coke <laughs> sign, to the right of the Coke sign, to the left. And uh, that's a good promotion. Mark and I were talking about that the other day uh, on the phone. Uh, Sarge, you remember playing against Dick Allen, seeing him play, and, and uh, you were never teammates, so I don't believe, were you? Never uh, teammates, you know, just looking at him from, or playing against him, but a uh, tremendous hitter. Um, you know, uh, having a thousand uh, RBIs would tell you that. Uh, but, uh, again, I've, I've, I've said it before, these guys are the kind of uh, players that make other players better, you know, on Correct. your team. And, and when he's there, you feel much more uh, comfortable. The same with uh, a Willie McCovey uh, in playing. So, uh, and besides being able to hit anybody's uh, fastball, and, you know, back in the day, that's what we uh, hit off of and adjusted on uh, breaking uh, pitches. Here's a guy that could uh, catch up to anybody's fastball and uh, play the game with no fear. One thing that I'd like to point out, just going off of uh, Greg's remarks, uh, Dick has often said to me that one of the greatest joys of his career was coming back to Philadelphia in, in May of 1975 and playing with, uh, with Greg and Mike Schmidt. Uh, and he was really, he saw himself playing through these guys. Uh, and a lot of people remember, well, he didn't hit with the same power. Well, the reason for that, and not many people know this, he tore his Achilles tendon his last year in Chicago with the White Sox. And as, as we know from Ryan Howard's case, once an Achilles tendon is blown out, the power hitter's career is over. I never heard that before. Well, if you, if you watch him run, he run with that little bit of a limp. I'm sorry? He yeah. had that little bit of a limp when he came back to us. Yes, and, uh, I He ran understand. with it. I mean, if you can picture him in your mind, you know, you can, you can see it. So, obviously, uh, you know, it, it did affect him. And like he said, it's going to affect your swing. Mm -hmm. and, and it is a shame because the numbers that he could have put up if, uh, if he didn't uh, would have just been astronomical. Uh, but Mike Schmidt, Dave Cash, and Richie Ashburn lured him out of retirement. Uh, they went to his farm in uh, Perkesee, Pennsylvania. He was dead set on being retired after he left, uh, he left Chicago, and they talked him out. And he said it was one of the highlights of his career to join that club. Well, all I know is when he got mad, you could always tell when he got mad, he'd take his finger and go like this on his glasses. When he did that, you stayed away from him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, we were talking about some of those long home runs, and he said, uh, I think, was it Bill Jenkinson uh, that was yes. uh, did the research? And yes. I think Dick has hit like 20 home runs of 500 feet or more. And, and since 2000, there may have only been like one uh, ball hit that far, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, this guy here, uh, Greg mm -hmm. Luzinski, hit the Liberty Bell on the facing of, uh, uh, oh, here, here is a, a chart which shows some of the uh, great home runs of uh, Dick Allen at Connie Mack Stadium. Wow. Remember that Valentine scoreboard, folks? Oh, man. I saw Wes Covington hit a ball up there by that clock. Oh, were Dick you? Allen. Uh, <laughs> that was in, in the 60s. Uh, he, so he doesn't miss a beat. So he's <laughs> right in there, boy. <laughs> but look at oh all these gosh. shots over the roof. Holy that Dick cow. Allen There's that Coke sign we were talking about. And, uh, well, you know, a bull hit three on top of Comiskey uh, Park on the roof. Uh, and uh, Dick Allen also launched a couple out there. In fact, some say he may have saved the White Sox uh, with, the, uh, with what he did. He was the American League MVP. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, here, here is a, another shot of that chart. 
Uh, this is Mark Carfagno, about whom you've heard and who's campaigned. Uh, Mark worked on the Phillies ground crew for so many years, and, uh, and it's a labor of love for him to tell people about the great career of Dick Allen and uh, very close to Richard Allen Jr. And so, well, Bill, uh, make, uh, give us a summary statement why Dick Allen should be in baseball's Hall of Fame. Well, basically his statistics, both traditional and sabermetrics, warrant his induction. I think uh, there's no question about the, the morality clause anymore. There, there shouldn't be. One of the things I've always valued about Dick is that uh, he has an uncanny way of finding out uh, about his friends and when something's wrong and they're in need of something and you get a phone call or he shows up. Um, and, and he did give an awful lot back to the game. I'm sure Greg can tell you he mentored a lot of young players. Uh, did it in Philadelphia, did it in Chicago. Uh, he's just a Hall of Fame person as well. Well, you talked about helping his teammates. I think Greg has told me, Mike Schmidt has uh, indicated that people like Dick Allen and Pete Rose help bring out the best in uh, Mike Schmidt. Well, it's kind of a funny thing with those, when players of uh, uh, that caliber come to a ball club, uh, you look up to them. You look up to them for leadership, to be honest with you, because these guys have put great numbers on the board. You know, Pete did it, Dick Allen's done it. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, like I said, uh, it's, a teammate that you have a, a lot, a lot of respect for. And Dick was one of those guys. And like it says in the book, Dick never caused any trouble with the Philadelphia Phillies. This, when, when I played with him, you never heard anything about him. He was there, slap you on the back. He was there, you know, to, to make you feel good with it, whether you hit the ball out of the ballpark or you, you had, a, had, a, had a strike out in the situation. That, that was Dick Allen. And uh, he got along with all our teammates excellent. Our thanks to Bill Cachetis. Don't forget, folks, if you get a chance, pick up a copy of uh, Bill Cachetis' new book, Dick Allen, The Life and Times of a Baseball Immortal. And we'll be right back with the final segment of today's Bull Session in just a moment. Hi, it's Pete.